everyone and welcome to ML Dan. This is Mehran. This is the first lecture of the lecture series entitled Concept Learning and General to Specific Ordering. In this lecture, we're going to focus on concept learning and really learn what it means. But first of all, we need to understand what machine learning means in the first place. So imagine that Joe has a habit of playing golf depending on what type of a day he is having. Now, what do I mean by, by what type of day? Meaning that, is the sky sunny or not? Is it hot, warm, or freezing? Is it windy or not? So depending on these attributes, uh, I, I don't remember if I said John or Joe, but say Joe would decide whether they're gonna, he's gonna play or not. For example, play golf, okay? So that's the question. Now, look at this table. We have four training examples. Each example consists of three attributes, sky, temperature, and the wind. And the last column is also called the target concept or the ground truth or the target feature. Different names, different term terminologies that refer to the same thing. Now, as you can see, each one of the attributes can have or basically can take different values. And depending on these values, you would have two answers for play, yes or no. So it's, it looks like a binary function, basically. So given uh, a certain values for, for the attributes, the output of this function would be either yes or no, meaning whether Joe is going to play golf or not on that specific day. Okay? Now, with this background, we're going to jump into some important questions about machine learning. Number one, what do we mean by machine? You can think of computers as machine. Learn what? What do we mean by learning, basically learning what? is of our interest. All the time we're basically focusing on learning the target concept. Okay, so in our example here, uh, target concept is play. So we want to learn the concept of Joe playing golf on a specific day. We want to know, we want to learn when he plays or when he doesn't play, right? Because we want to predict this in the future. Okay, so that is what we want to learn, the target concept. Learn from what? From our training examples, of which we have four here. For example, the first training example is sunny, warm, strong. That are the values for sky, temperature, and wind. And the corresponding outcome for that is yes. So this is given to the machine. Okay, so machine will have to learn, depending on the value of these attributes, what is the habit of this Joe that we're talking about. Uh, if, if it sees loads of examples of these attributes and the corresponding target concept for each one of them, then hopefully it will be able to extract the pattern out of that table and figure out, okay, what is that underlying hidden uh, habit of this Joe guy that makes him decide whether he's gonna play or not? So if I give a vector of values for these attributes to the machine, for example, let's say snowy, cold, weak for sky, temperature, and wind, can the machine predict that whether Joe's gonna play or not? That's the question. Now, learn from what? Question number three, as I said, the machine's gonna learn from all the training examples with their corresponding target concept that are all given to the machine. Now, question number four, what do we mean by general function, right? First of all, what do I mean by function here? As you notice, 
we want uh, that we will give the machine a set of values for these attributes right so that would be the, that input to the machine and the output would be yes or no right so basically a machine is the machine is behaving like a function like not just any other function but like a boolean function whose inputs are values for the attributes and the output is the decision yes or no but it's a general function actually because the machine is going to learn based on these training examples right but guess what in the future i will ask the machine whether joe is going to play or not but i'm going to tell the machine some values i'm going to uh, give it some values for sky temperature and wind that it might not have seen before right so that's the thing can the machine still determine it still predict whether joe's going to play or not that's the whole idea can it generalize what it has learned from the training examples to the unseen data or we also call that the test data that is why we call this hidden function that describes Joe's behavior as a general function because we hope that on an unseen day the machine could still predict the concept of play for Joe meaning that what it has learned can be generalized to the un, uh, unseen data and what are the inputs and outputs of this general function? So the inputs would be the training examples or basically examples. They could be also test examples. And the output would be the prediction. Play, which has two values, yes or no. So now we can jump into the definition of concept learning. Now, on the corner over here, I have copied the, the table as a reminder. Now, when it comes to concept learning, we have several questions and uh, issues to address. Number one, what is a concept? A concept is a spirit or, or a group or a category of something. Let me give you an example. For example, bird can be a concept. The concept of bird encompasses all the birds around the world that have ever existed, exist, or will, become, will, will come to existence. Another example of concept would be the concept of hot, right? We all know what hot is. We have an, an idea about it. We have a concept of hot in our head. Another concept could be a delightful situation. That is another concept, right? Um, you could have numerous situations where, where you would feel delightful, right? But you have a concept that would encompass all of those individual uh, situations, right? Or as I said, the bird, the concept of bird encompasses all types of birds around the world, right? So that is why I'm saying a concept is spirit of something or a category of something. And that is what we're trying to learn. When it comes to concept, you can think of it as a Boolean function, as I said in the previous slide. So the concept of bird could be defined as a Boolean function. Why? Because given an input, for example, if the input is tiger, this Boolean function will spit out yes or no, meaning that is this a bird or not, right? For example, for tiger, the output would be not, and would be no. For a woodpecker, the output would be yes, right? So that is why we have this Boolean uh, definition over here. Question number two, basically in this case, issue number two. Concept learning is actually a search problem. Now, when it comes to searching, searching where? Now. This answer might look a little bit fancy, but it's actually quite simple. The search happens in the space of hypotheses, right? Now the question is, what is a hypothesis? Hypothesis is basically a set of 
constraints on our attributes. For example, in the table down below, one particular hypothesis could be sunny, warm, strong, right? As you can see, I've constrained the value of sky to sunny. I've constrained the value of temperature to warm and I've constrained the value of wind to strong, right? So this vector of constrained values for the attributes is called a hypothesis. And in concept learning, the machine lear tries to search the whole uh, space of hypotheses uh, and look at all the possibilities out there. And for what? because it wants to find the best hypothesis. And what is the best hypothesis? The best hypothesis is the one that fits the training set best, right? And what do I mean by that? It means that, for example, consider this case. Consider this case, let me choose my pen over here. Good, now consider this case. This is a hypothesis, right? For example, snowy, um, cold, strong. This is one of many possible hypotheses, right? Now let's say this is the best one that the machine has found. I want to just tell you what it really means that this particular hypothesis is the best one. It means that with this hypothesis, the machine can tell you whether Joe is going to play or not. All right? Obviously, in this example, this hypothesis is a very bad one because, well, I just chose, chose it arbitrarily. But the fact is, for a given hypothesis H, right? Let's get more general. Let's get more academic. What do I want from this H? What I want from it is that given a example, which means this example is nothing but uh, some attributes for the day, right? Again, sky, temperature, and wind, some values for that. So given a, a typical day, basically, I want this H to be able to produce the right, the correct result, the yes or no results, right? And by right, I mean it has to fit the training example. For example, I want this H be, to be strong enough that when, it, when I give the first row over here, meaning sunny, warm, and strong, it has to produce yes. If I give it rainy, cold, and strong, I want it to produce no, right? And this is a very simple example. Consider a huge training set in your data set, okay? It is kind of tricky to find that particular function, that H, that can uh, basically map the whole training set successfully to the output. It's kind of tricky actually, right? But the machine strives to find that particular hypothesis. And what does learning really mean? It means that it will try H1, H2, H3 up to H, say, K or N, whatever. Eventually it will converge, please note, hopefully converge to H star, which is that optimal hypothesis, the one that we've been looking for, the one that fits our training set perfectly. So that's the whole idea here. But please note that um, I'm not going to focus on the unsupervised learning in this lecture. Obviously, there are cases in machine learning where you don't have access to that target uh, concept, right? And you just have to understand the data on its own, and you don't have access to any ground truth whatsoever. 
okay? But this is a, a simple example of basically supervised learning, and I'm not going to digress into other methods of uh, machine learning in this lecture. I hope that this video has been informative for you, and if that's the case, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. FYI, if you want more detail about this lecture, the link to my website, MLDON, has been posted in the description of this video. You can just click on it and read more into detail. So until the next time, on behalf of MLDON, take care of yourselves and bye.